to ladies. It is 1130. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the uh, standing committee meeting for economic development, downtown metropolitan planning. My name is Khaled Bay. I'm the chair. Also, uh, members of the committee that are present, uh, Councillor Tim Rudd, Councillor Joe Carney, and Councillor Pat Hogan. We also have on uh, our city auditor, uh, Commissioner Dave Clifford, Commissioner Mike Collins, uh, Councillor Driscoll has joined. I believe I saw Councillor Paniagua. Uh, and yeah, so uh, if, I, if I read that right, there are only two items and they're both coming from MBD. Am I right, Commissioner? And Kevin, uh, if you're on the chairman, if I'm uh, incorrect. Uh, so from from MBD, that that is uh, that is correct, Councillor. Okay. So how about we start there, uh, if you would. Uh, um, yes, thank you. Uh, so as um, uh, we we've talked about leading up to this point, uh, HUD um, has uh, uh, granted money through both uh, Community Development Block Grant and Emergency Solutions Grant, as authorized by the CARES Act. Um, the emergency solutions grant money is uh, uh, money that we've been able to budget and we're able to turn around and uh, uh, put that to use uh, without going through uh, the full uh, procedure that we've uh, that we do for typical program year funding. Uh, that being said, we've included the budget here because we want to make sure that you are um, feeling fully fully aware of it. Uh, and there has been a second uh, amount that has been distributed that um, uh, we'll, we're putting together as well. Um, the CDBG funds, that is money that um, uh, there's a five day minimum public comment period. Uh, so uh, considering that the, the council uh, likes the way that the budget looks, we will uh, start that uh, comment period tomorrow and hold the, uh, uh, hold the hearing next week so that we'd be able to move on this at the, um, uh, at the at the next council meeting, there's two things that we would be looking at. One is the budget itself, and then the other is a, an agreement with uh, Onondaga County, so the Department of Social Services can administer uh, about seven seven hundred fifty thousand dollars out of ESG and about one and a quarter million dollars out of um, CDBG in direct financial assistance for uh, uh, rental payments. For people that are, are facing eviction from not being able to pay their rent. Uh, this is it's an important partnership for a few reasons. One, CDBG, HUD, HUD says uh, basically they've got to be last dollars in. Uh, there, there cannot be other funds that could have covered an expense. Well, DSS has the ability in a way that our nonprofit partners do not have the ability to tap into um, New York State Department of Labor and make sure that if, if someone could have, you know, if, if someone's saying, hey, I got turned down from uh, unemployment or I didn't qualify for unemployment, that that's actually accurate. Uh, the other is, uh, as this is reimbursement based, the county feels that they are in a position where they can front the money and we can turn around and pay them on the back end uh, in a way that would have been more challenging for our nonprofit partners to do it. Recognizing the strength of our nonprofit partners uh, for anyone that is deemed that a, along with uh, qualifying for the money, they also would benefit from having uh, some supportive casework. We do also have in here the ability to then uh, uh, engage the um, uh, eviction prevention program caseworkers out of uh, Catholic charities so that uh, we can make sure that this, this money is successful in keeping people in their homes, which is incredibly important to us. So uh, th those, those two uh, um, uh, line items within the budget really, really do go hand in hand with each other. So that's the big overview. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is see if you've got any questions there and then walk you through the CDBG budget. Any, any questions uh, before I, I move on to that? Yeah, I'll go back to the very first statement you made, and I want to sure. go back because I need clarity. Um, yep. uh, I'm pretty abreast of the rules, so I always find it interesting when I hear what sounds like new rules. Yeah. Um, uh, but it could happen. But when you first started, you made mention to HUD funds that you guys had already spent, and it didn't require the normal processes. What does that mean exactly? 
I have not expended. Uh, what, uh, what we're saying is the ESG funding, uh, so the budget that we've, we've uh, included in the packet we sent to you to, uh, yesterday, uh, we haven't expended any of that. That uh, what we're saying is that uh, HUD HUD rules on that. They wanted because of the fact that it's it's uh, dealing with the most vulnerable populations. They wanted that money to get out as quickly as possible. So there's not the public process uh, that's that's involved with that the way that there is with CDBG. Referring to public hearings, gotcha. Public comment period. Co correct. I am. So, so, yep. Okay. Uh, any of my, I, I don't have any questions relative to the intermunicipal agreement. I don't know if you, any, any of my colleagues uh, on the committee have any questions. Uh, Councilor Bay, uh, just a few. I, I, I'm just concerned with, on the logistics of this, uh, Mike. Um, who's going to handle the actual interaction between us and social services? Is there a key person? I mean, somebody, constituents call us. Um, is there somebody we can vector in as far as a person will be a key person to help them out? Yeah, that, that's a that's an important uh, point that you bring up, Councillor. The um, uh, so at at the negotiations level, it's been myself and Sarah Merrick at the county uh, to make sure that that we're you know we, we're we've got all of our teams on the same page. Um, on our end, uh, both um, uh, Sue McMahon, who, who operates our emergency solutions grant, uh, Winona Timmons, who operates our uh, community development block grant, they'll both be able to refer directly uh, and we'll make sure that uh, uh, Maria and anybody else that would be uh, receiving income, uh, incoming information would know exactly uh, how to make sure that we're, we're getting people directly to where they need to go rather than saying, hey, go, go look at the county website. What about the city website? Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll we'll have that. Um, uh, we can have that information out there in a lot of ways. We'll do it in the traditional way. We've also got uh, the volunteer lawyers. Uh, we are meeting with them every three weeks around eviction, so they'll be able to be spreading the word. Uh, we'll make sure that our not our um, uh, grant funded partners uh, that are not part of this grant are still aware of it. We're going to make sure that um, it, it, every way that we have formally and informally. To get the word out, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Well, if you could just let us know, because uh, you know I I got a lot of good people involved in this, but there's a lot of moving parts, and I just worry about you know sending some somebody to uh, somebody who's going to send them to somebody else and to somebody else and to somebody mm -hmm. else and all that. So, so uh, counselor, what we can do is uh, we we can summarize over the next couple of days because uh, this is something that would start August first. So over the next week or two, we, we can summarize what that uh, looks like and then turn around and share that again. Okay, thank you, Michael. Sure, sure. Uh, let, me, let me make a quick note on that before I, before I go too far. Any other, any other questions on the full agreement? Um, I would. And it's heading council vote. If, um, so am I understanding it properly that the the two are both increments, so it's the 2.9 million is additional, 1.4 is additional on top of the HUD allocations we got earlier. That's right. Uh, Councillor, say, say that question. I've got a fan over me. Say that question again. I got a little confused. The, 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 two, the two amounts, the 2.9 and the 1.4, are in addition to the amounts we originally received from HUD and had in the budget. Is that fair? The, these are uh, separate additional amounts from the program year 46 funding that you approved back in the spring. So I was just thinking in the supplemental information that you give to the council when it goes on the agenda, if you could show the original allocations and like the delta here, like this is kind of like the the change, because I assume mm -hmm. most of them had allocations before, so it's an increase so we could see how much more. And then I was thinking if there's any, if you have any backup as to what their outcomes or like their outputs change, you know, like how, what are they doing different with the money? I think that would help too, because I like some of it. I definitely like the direct financial assistance seems like it probably lets them help, um, whatever, two hundred more people or something. But uh, just like whatever it is, like this money, I think if there's anything you can show that explains what the money means in the community, and I think that'll help us understand how it's a one-time 
we're not doing something that's like, oh, we need this again next year, but we're truly like addressing the um, the current situation the crisis. So the so uh, so yeah, it's it's um, when you take a look at the the budget, one, one column that we added to the budget uh, for the council is how many households or businesses we expect to be uh, reached with each budget line. So uh, so we've got that. Uh, that helps. I didn't see that. That's on, that's on the one allocation, not the other. But that does help. So, so yeah, we, we are not dealing with a program year forty six allocation here. We're we're dealing with a uh, with, with a CARES Act, the sort of CDBG CV coronavirus funds. But why? I guess why would you put the households on the the two point nine million, but not on the one point four million? Because this is specific, every single dollar within uh, uh, two, two point, almost, uh, almost $3 million, every single dollar there must be related to coronavirus in one way or another. That looks really, really different than uh, the way that we've always operated CDBG funds. And so what we wanted to do was be able to have some type of educated guess at quantifying how many households would be able to affect with this uh, and it, there is we're guessing here because this is uh you know for all the reasons that we've talked about for the past few months about how we're handling things with the pandemic. Uh, so i i'm happy to talk with you more about what else, what else you'd, you'd like to uh uh like to see but what if if it's if um when we're ready we can go through the budget We'll touch on it, and if we get to the end, and you you've got more stuff you want to summarize afterwards. Well, I guess in, at a minimum, I'd just like a column that has their original allocation, so you could see how much of a boost they're getting. Are you doubling? Are you going up five percent? Just what that would help. Uh, understood. Okay, and and as you'll see as we go through, some of these are new, and we're not in the previous one. So, well, uh, just that would be that would be useful to know as well. Okay. Uh, for the sake of time, we probably won't go through all of those because we have a committee uh, meeting and meeting yeah. following. Uh, sure. And it, it's, if, if, if the other department's co uh, commissioner doesn't have any items or if their time doesn't take too long, then maybe we could. I also know that there's a ribbon cutting for the creek walk at 1230 that some counselors may be planning to attend. Uh, and so just in the interest of time, we're going to uh, be watchful of that. Absolutely. Uh, if there's no more questions on the intermunicipal agreement, uh, can I get a vote to move on to the agenda, Councilor Rudd? Yes. I'll say I can come back to uh, <laughs> uh, Councilor Hogan. Yes. Yes. All right. So that's four yeses, but obviously the concerns that uh, Councilor Rowan uh, expressed, we'd be interested in knowing about those as well. Uh, we got to the second item, Commissioner. Uh, so the second item is is uh, that the budget itself. Uh, so I can, you, you want me to hit that just in summary real quick? Is that what's best for, for the committee? Uh, I don't know. Does uh, Councilor Rod Carney, do you find it necessary? It's fine. So, I'm fine with it. Right. I'm fine too. Yeah, I'm fine with it. All right, so uh, since you're all fine, I'm going to take that as a vote to move it on to the agenda. Yes. Right. So, Commissioner, uh, let me check to see if there's any other items from other departments, and if we have time, we'll come back to uh, Absolutely. Some, some kind of summary explanation of the budget. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, zoning. Ms. Lemondon, are you on? I don't believe I received any items from you. But, and Evan, you can uh, let me know if she's not on. Maybe Evan's not on either. All right, so I'm going to assume that, I mean, I didn't see anything, but I thought it was necessary to check. And of course, I figured if Eric Ennis had anything, he would have said it already. Eric, nothing? That's correct, Councilor. Nothing from me this afternoon. All right, Commissioner Collins, we got 15 more minutes. Take it away. Well, let's, I, I, I'll, I'll use a couple and then we'll, we'll see what we can do with the rest. Uh, so uh, uh, so a couple things. I'm going to start with uh, the, the, just the very first line for a couple of reasons. One is it's, it's a, uh, 
uh, we've probably put more thought into that line than almost any other. Uh, originally, when we were creating the city um, uh, general fund budget, we thought that we'd be able to uh, uh, pull a lot of money out of uh, uh, these funds to be able to do uh, demolition. Uh, it was well after that, HUD offered the guidance saying that uh, uh, it was more restrictive than uh, any of us had uh, a reason to believe that it was going to be. Uh, and so uh, between the land bank and emergency demolitions, the money that will be used here uh, in one way or another needs to go to COVID. So it could be that a um, we'll tear something down and by June of 2022, we would be able to uh, build uh, something else. Perhaps we take it out of two family, put up a one family. We can demonstrate that there's greater social distance and that helps prevent the spread of uh, disease like this. Uh, if a business closed, took on a lot of water, roof fails because there was nobody in there and we said, and we can show that uh, the failure of the business was due to COVID, we'd be able to uh, take the building down because of that. So th those are the types of restrictions we're trying to work our way through with that. So we, we originally expected to be able to put more money in there, but we, we think we're good with what we've got. Catholic Charities Housing Services, uh, this is the eviction pre prevention program. I won't say any more on that. That's what we talked about earlier uh, for casework uh, with uh, people that we'd be identified through our last line there and uh, uh, with DSS. Uh, uh, financial counseling, we're, we're adding $20,000 to the FEC program. That's last dollars in on a match uh, and uh, CFE program or uh, the CFE fund has uh, been so impressed with the work that uh, uh, that program has done and how it stepped up during uh, the pandemic that uh, they actually are going to be funding us uh, enough with uh, after, on top of this match so that we can bring on another counselor. Uh, urgent care program. Uh, so this is, um, uh, we believe that about 15% of the funds on uh, the program year 46 budget uh, in, in talking with home headquarters uh, for the urgent care program would be COVID related. So we're, we're moving this over here and, and adjusting it over on program year 46. Uh, the SHARP program, this is on top of what we've got over at um, uh, the SHARP program that's within the regular uh, program year 46 budget. We've added a new program with property repair fund uh, with, with landlords being down cash and uh, many of our residents um, not always living in the best properties for the landlords that do want to maintain their properties, but they're short on funds. This would be a, a loan program they'd be able to uh, tap into. Uh, volunteer Lawyers Project, this would give us money to uh, add uh, assistance at housing court uh, with uh, the expected increase in evictions. Uh, the Small Business Micro Loan Program, SEDCO was uh, not only the first in the state, but incredibly uh, successful with the loan program. They did right when uh, New York on Pause was uh, was created. Uh, this would, uh, uh, at $150,000, uh, do a minimum of six businesses that they'd be able to, uh, uh, to do. Eric's on here, so he can address more on that if you're interested, but there's a, definitely an MWBE focus uh, for the outreach on that. Uh, and then lastly, the uh, direct financial assistance. So that's my, that's my quick run through. What, what, what do we want to go back and touch on, if anything? I, I just, uh, I always have a question relative to efforts uh, with demolition. Uh, mm -hmm. So how, how much, if, if you could, how, how, how much funds are there for demolition? So this budget has got five hundred and thirteen thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars. Five hundred thirteen thousand two hundred twenty-five. That's what this budget have, and overall, what do we have for demolition? Mm, I'm going to have to get that to you later. I, I I don't have the exact total in front of me. I don't want to misquote it. Relative to the uh, announced housing program, how much, how much funds do we have for that? How, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, which program is that? The housing development program. We went from talking about 200 houses to now only five. For the, for, the, for the infill program. Right. So the infill program is um, 
That that is a compilation of a tremendous number of um, resources, and we are meeting uh, a, a, again uh, in a couple of weeks to look at uh, what what that looks like because we're, that could be CDBG, it could be home. We had expected AHC, uh, could be DRI, lot uh, could be LIHTC. Uh, so that's a that's a constantly being rethought process. All right, uh, this is to be a reiteration of what I've said for many years, because uh, it seemed like it seemed like the effort is there, but we're kind of still doing the, the same thing, you know. And, and obviously, the cost for demolition is way cheaper than than construction. Uh, but I, I think there needs to be we need to strike a bit of a balance there uh, when we're talking about demolishing properties versus developing them, especially since there's a housing development program on you know that's supposed to be going taking place. Uh, and it's just my logic that some of those dollars that are being used to demolish could be put together to pay, maybe not necessarily to this COVID problem, but some of those dollars that are being used for demolition can be put together to, to develop, especially mm -hmm. since the development of those properties do more for our bottom line than demolishing anything. Uh, so I just want to put that out there for further consideration. Uh, any of my colleagues have any questions, comments on the budget as explained? I agree. I think that if we have five hundred thousand dollars, we should instead of putting that towards the demos, why wouldn't we put that towards the new construction? Um, being that we are short already with the funding for that, I mean, only the five hundred thousand would only get us two new structures, um, but that five hundred thousand can help plug some of those gaps that were missing for the infill construction project. I would rather see it go there than the demos, and then not having the funds to replace. The vacant land. Um, this is um, Sharon Owens. Also um, taken into consideration because of the budget cuts, we're hoping that some of this will supplement some of the emergency budget um, demolitions that we run into because we had to make some adjustments because of the needed budget cuts. But your point is taken. I have a general question regarding demos. I heard the county sort of like throws a bunch of money that they were going to do demos for. So like I do one that I think the land bank had tagged for demo that's next to another house that's getting renovated so it could become the yard for this other house. But um, have do you have do you know anything about the status of like county money for demos? Has it been frozen or like are we having even less money for demos than normal overall? Or is that really a question for? for I, I, I think that's a question for Land Bank. I, I can tell you that the that the, the the county and the Land Bank have also been talking about how CARES Act funding could support um, uh, some of the work where, where there's the, the most critical issues of of safety. Um, and but beyond that, I don't know. So I I really can't speak to what the what the county's uh, overall projection is for that. Did the county? I, the HUD money usually goes to the cities. Did the county also get? Uh, so, idea? so the so the county also typically gets funding. They just they get it to a, a lesser degree because of the, the concentrations of poverty. Uh, so yes, they they do, and we've also uh, I've been talking regularly with the county around how they're planning on on using their funds. Uh, so there there's been some coordination to try to make sure that um, you know we're 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 not trying to replicate each other's work. Uh, with the exception of where they may like an idea that we've got and, and do it uh, uh, outside of the city. Uh, and uh, uh, Councillor Allen and Councillor Bay, to to your point, um, we we certainly always like building a lot more than we like taking things down. Uh, and um, uh, you know when, when we look at when we get together to look at uh, how this money can be used. Uh, for uh, when it comes to infill, we're looking for every way we can to, to turn around and build, and, and that would be inclusive of what would qualify within these funds. So your well, your, your, your point your point is definitely heard. Uh, you know, and our point is also based on math. You know, while I can appreciate that that hasn't been our immediate history, we've been tearing down structures, we even turned down structures that weren't even demolition candidates in the past. Uh, and I won't say we the city, I won't say the agencies that's been guilty of that. So, and, and I guess my thing is, you know, the, the statement certainly isn't made under the assumption that no consideration has been given, but to me, it's simple. You're spending 25, 50,000 or whatever to demolish a property. There's no return on investment for that, especially if you don't have the funds to put something back. 
which has been the argument that's been made now since I've been there for eight years, uh, over eight years. So, you know, I, and, and I, there's just more consideration as far as I'm concerned is it needed to strike a, a further balance there um, to where, you know, we, we certainly get the best, we get the best bang for the taxpayer's buck. Mm -hmm. right? The point that the counselor made is, is true. We tear it down, you know, I have funds to put it back. We end up with more of the snaggle tooth look that I've often referred to. And then you got another neighborhood that's now looking at a lot of two for probably the next 10, 15 years. We can't we can't repeat that kind of mistake, you know, and not for nothing. You know, the, the argument over safety is valid, but oftentimes for some of these structures, it's exaggerated. You know, I mean, the houses are not falling down on top of people and all of them are not are not occupied by squatters. You know, but that becomes a part of the cell and the argument to tear down the structure like you know, with all due respect, like we're like vampires and, and we, get, we get our energy from tearing down houses. You know? <laughs> so, so, I mean, we, if, we, if we could find a, a better way to strike an even greater balance there, you know, I think that will, will go a long way just, just for our progress in the future. Appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm going to have to find a way to work that uh, vampire analogy into something in the next few days. I, pre I appreciate that one. <laughs> Uh, my, uh, uh, to Councilor Bay and Councilor Allen's points, uh, Michael, are any of these demolitions, I mean, would, would any of them be in furtherance of the infill project at all? Uh, so, so they, so they absolutely, absolutely could be. Uh, we have, our energy has been spent in um, jug, juggling the, the reduced resources uh rather than identifying the specific candidates for what might come down and what might go up uh you know we've we've continued the infill discussion uh weekly honestly uh as as we've gone through this uh but now that we'll be able to uh, to finalize this and uh you know we've got a better understanding of what state money was previously likely and and does not seem to be now uh, that's that's honestly why we've called uh, uh, called ourselves together. I mean, the, the way I've been referring to it is we're getting the band back together just to, you know, figure out exactly the the, the best way that we can have impact on uh, on creating new homes with with what is available to us. And you know, frankly, looking underneath every every couch cushion we got for uh, for a few bucks. Other questions. No, Councilor Rudd. No, I'm sick, Councilor. I'm, sorry. I'm all set. Any other Councilor? Keep it short, though, because you're not on our committee. <laughs> any other Councilor have any questions, comments? Of course, to keep it short is a joke. Okay, keep it short. Um, I that don't, go that back. don't apply to you, President. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to go back to what Mike talked about early on with the CARES Act and rent um, assistance to Catholic charities. So mm -hmm. that is going to be immediate. There's not going to be a lot of red tape for these folks to get the assistance. Um, so it's not going to be immediate. We um, we expect that the county will be able to start uh, August one with it. Um, and they, the idea of going through DSS is it is the most efficient way for us to do it because of, of their ability to make sure that um, we're hitting all the um, uh, hitting all the check boxes that could otherwise get money clawed back. Uh, so if, if we were granting this any place else, it would slow the process down. Uh, they've also got the infrastructure. So uh, it, it is the most efficient option that we've got. But are all the restrictions that come through DSS going to apply or no? So the restrictions that come through DSS uh, don't apply here. What apply here are the restrictions that um, uh, come from specific to HUD. So what they'll be able to do is take a look at, uh, like the income restriction on uh, emergency solutions grant money is, is more restrictive than uh, the income limits on the CDBG. So What's they'll... The 
What's the limit? I'm going to be quick, Councilor Bay. What's the limit? Yeah, uh, so it's, um, I believe it's 40% AMI on ESG and 80% on CDBG, but I do have uh, some of the grant team on here. Uh, please confirm or correct me, uh, teammates. Hi, this is Winona Timmons. Uh, so for ESG, it's 30% AMI, and for CDBG, it's 80% AMI. Thank you. Thank you, Winona. That was close. Uh, any so, further questions? I, and and I can I can absolutely get you guys a, a summary of of what those restrictions are. Thank you. Sure. And my apologies. I failed to mention that the president and Councilor Allen had joined. Uh, any further questions? It is now. 12 o'clock, uh, so if it's not, uh, it's officially Councilor Rudd's finance party. All right, we can start the finance committee meeting. Um, I know it's all the same members. We have Councilor Bay, Councilor Hogan, Councilor Carney. Um, what other counselors are on the call? That's hard. Um, Driscoll, Allen, uh, the president. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I don't Councilor know. Councilor Pani Okay, we have three. We have uh, we have three items, so um, I guess four. The travel legislation has gone through a couple times, so I, I would personally suggest we just push that forward to the full council, and we'll address that stuff as we get there. I also know there's this time constraint of the twelve thirty other event for people. Then the are we okay moving the travel legislation back into the general agenda? Councilor Bay. Uh, come back to me. Okay. Councilor Hogan. I need an interpreter, and I'm, I'm uh, sort of like uh, <laughs> depending on the uh, city auditor to interpret for me. I just oh, yeah. get it. Okay. Hang on. We're going to come back to this. We'll do this one last. I thought I would do this one first. We'll do this one last. Um, the two easy ones are, I think, the budgets for house marshall and uh the downtown district so i believe they will be here to ask answer questions before the whole council and really we've had their whole presentation during the budget cycle so i i'm gonna ask them just to focus on anything that they've changed but are we okay moving the two um independent assessment areas uh, uh, in regards to cross marshall and uh downtown I, I would expect that they would be fine. I don't believe they can kind of willy nilly change anything and come back, you know, because if it's voted on in the budget, that's what they have to do. So hopefully yeah. they didn't change anything or they won't have any movement, but otherwise they should be fine. Yeah, I'm okay too, but Councilor Rudd. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with moving it as well. I mean, we discussed it in the budget, so. Okay, so we'll move those two. The, the other item is um, for assessment. 307 309 Holland Street with home headquarters. Can you explain who, whoever is best versed? Can you explain this one a bit? Uh, sure. Uh, good afternoon, counselors. This is David Clifford. Um, the uh, uh, there was a this this was a house that was sold originally to home headquarters. Uh, the city put a reverter clause in the deed that said that they had to either renovate it or or sell it to a uh, qualified. Uh, purchaser within a certain amount of time. City never acted on that reverter. Home headquarters eventually sold it to Habitat for Humanity. In the interim, uh, I believe around this, 2004. This is simply a vacant lot, right? Not it is not. Yes, because around 2004, the house got demolished. So um, now the lot, uh, uh, the land bank wants to acquire the lot, and uh, there, there's still this reverter clause which runs with the land, the way to extinguish it is for the city to issue a quick claim deed. And that's what this is for. What's the land bank plan? I don't know. I, I sort of feel like I need an explanation of what the land bank wants to do in order to take this like special approach. Well, the reverter clause really would not be enforceable at this time anyway, because the house is gone. 
But you're isn't that the mechanism we're using? That's the part of like we're if, using. If, a yeah, it would. It, if I mean, if if the city were to enforce, it's my understanding. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, if the city were to enforce their rights under the reverter clause, it would revert back to the city of Syracuse. And right, I, and then I, we would transfer it to the land bank. That's what the land bank's asking, right? No, the, the land bank's asking to for us to just issue a quit claim to extinguish the reverter clause so they can acquire the property from Habitat, who is the current owner. Oh, extinguish the thing so the land bank yes. gets it directly. Yes. What do other counselors think about this? I was just down there yesterday and I can't think, is it which 309 would be to the north or to the south? Or, well, which way would that be, uh, Dave? Is that towards the corner? Probably on the south side. So it's on, it the, on, the, on the south street. side of, of, of the street. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I can't come up with it. I think that there's, I know there's one big lot there that looks like you could put a house on there. So I don't know. It's, it's a big lot. It looks it like looks at like least a double, maybe three lots originally. It's a big yeah. lot in online. It's got a bunch of tires in the front, but cut. so I imagine the plans are to use that lot for a, another house, but I can't see it being split up with the neighbors or anything. There's plenty of land down there. I think we need to know, is this part of the infill construction project or not? It seems like it is over there on Highland. I think you're right, Councillor Allen. I think it is. I'm still a little unsure of the boundaries of the, because it seems like infill is all over the place between the south side and the west side, correct, Councillor Allen? Yeah, there's there's a few lots on the, on the west side that are going to be redeveloped, but I was trying to get the address now so we can at least see if it's a part of it, but I believe it is. It's a part of that project. So, so with that in mind, just a question. Uh, if, if this is slated to ultimately be sold to home headquarters or housing, I mean, that's who's doing the development, if I'm not mistaken. Why are we selling it? Why are we considering this land bank route? Like, we're just passing it around in circles. It, it, we don't own the property. That's owned by Habitat, Habitat for Humanity at this point. Apparently, they are not going to develop the site, so they want to transfer it to the land bank. No, I understand that. Only for the land bank to sell it right back to home headquarters or, or possibly the housing vision. My point is, why, why, why not just sell it to home headquarters or housing vision? And that's obviously not a question for us to answer, but, you know, it just seems like a lot of paperwork for nothing. All this does is remove the, the title, the reverter clause. And I, I think for it to go to the land bank, the land bank probably wants it because they can use, they can apply for the AG funds for oh, the that's redevelopment. Right. So that's probably why the land bank would get it versus like um, housing visions or home headquarters. All right. Councilor well, Allen, since you're the chair for NBD, how do you feel about this item? I don't want to like get in your get in the way of holding something up, but. I say we I say we wait to see, not wait to see, but as act, I'm actively looking now to see if that's part of the infill construction project. Because if it is, then it makes sense as to why um, the land bank would try to acquire it because then they can get the AG funds to put towards the actual project. But I just got to make sure that it's part of that particular project and not just them getting it and then selling it um, to like a neighbor. Yeah, we're not doing no side yard, so if that's their plan, I'd rather stay where it is. This is like a side football field, for the record. This would be the Ponderosa. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, the in Holland, um, I, I, I agree that it makes sense, especially considering that funds are hard to come by right now for the infill development project. If somehow the land bank gets access to more funds that allows for development, then, then it makes sense. In the short to Commissioner Clinton's point, all we're talking about is essentially removing the clause from it so that uh, Habitat for Humanity can do something with it. Uh, and that I don't have issue with. Councillor Hogan, what do you think? Are you okay moving it? I think the same way as Councillor Bay and Councillor Allen. 
Councilor Carney. That's when people stick together. <laughs> Hogan, when did you go to Corcoran? 1947, right after World War II. I heard it got built in like 1963. No, no, just... I around. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, uh, yeah, I guess I'm fine with moving it in further discussion. I guess my question would be, I'd like to hear from the land bank what their intention with the property is once we give it to them. All right, I'm going to I'm going to move it forward and I'll reserve the right to hold it later in front of everybody if we don't have the right information. I'll have them call you call you Councilor Rudd and you can distribute the answer. How's that? OK, sounds good. OK, coming back around, let's do the uh, travel legislation discussion. So. Um, I mean, we can we can deal with it. I don't know. I haven't. Hey, do you want to speak to the item and where we're at based on um yep um so uh i apologize i'm having some connectivity issues so i'm keeping my video off for the time being but um uh, everyone on the committee should have gotten an email from me that um just had some edits written in um and they shouldn't be too different from the ones that you mentioned before or that you saw maybe a week or two ago so um, the changes that are in here right now that the law department is comfortable with um, is that so if the travel is over $1,000, it will be approved by the May, in addition to the department head, by the mayor or the budget director. Next change in the time for the submission request, there is some fluffy language in there that we took out, like the word sufficiently and a couple other examples. Uh, for the travel days component section 1257, uh, there has been uh, language added in here that if they are staying over that they either have to use the teleworking policy, personal time or vacation time, and they're responsible for any additional related expenses. Then, um, moving on, we took out a section in here that was that basically said um, don't break the rules or you won't get reimbursed the full amount uh, the law department said that based upon this policy we should see if they're breaking the rules during the approval process so it shouldn't impact the reimbursement process so that was in a version that you all saw like a week and a half ago, and it's out of the version that has just been circulated um, this morning. And then the last part that's up for conversation was about the use of city vehicles. And the law department actually just kind of sent a response about that, where they said the city's preference, preference is that city vehicles be used when available. Um, if a personal vehicle is owned that they um, don't see there being a big liability issue because I'm going back and cheating really quick and looking at this. Uh, ownership of the vehicle is largely, although not completely irrelevant, it's no, in a no-fault state like New York, the primary insurance pays out and then looks to uh, the next group. Uh, so they said the no fault provision would likely apply. There is proteinial liability exposure regardless of the vehicle. So everybody's getting their SAT vocabulary lesson today. Um, and then the other thing that the law department just mentioned was concern about the advancement of funds clause. Um, and it seems like, I'm sorry, just scrolling to that, that's section 1262 um, on page five. Um, and it seems like their concern is uh, related to the last sentence of this, um, that the reimbursement can be for registration fees, travel, meals, lodging, and tuition. And they uh, said that they thought we might need to not we might not need to include things like meals because people should basically be able to cover that um, on their own as opposed to like a plane ticket or a conference registration. So that's not written in there, but that was just something that came from the law department a half hour ago. 
<laughs> okay. Questions from the counselors first. Uh, Councilor Brett, correct me if I'm wrong. One of the sticking points, and I apologize if I missed it. One of the sticking points of this dialogue, if I, if I remember, was who signs off on travel policy. Is that still an issue? Yeah, um, so in what ahead, what was proposed what was proposed or is proposed in the legislation now is that the um, budget analyst and the department head will do the approvals if it's less than a thousand dollars and if it's over a thousand dollars it will involve an additional signature of the mayor or budget director. So here, here's my concern with that I have two. One in the era of centralization in the city of Syracuse that appears to contradict that effort. You know, one of the things that was a big part of the discussion coming in with this administration was to centralize decision making, contracts, spending, and the like. Uh, that goes in the opposite direction. The other issue, of course, uh, outside of the obvious that the charter dictates something or, or communicates something different, uh, is the fact that uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Let me pause. Give that second question for consideration because the answer may have been given. I'll. I'll yield to somebody else and I'll come back. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Carney. Uh, you know, I, we just got this. I'm sorry, Councillor Carney. Why don't you go first? You want to go first, Joe? I, I guess I just still have questions on. So, what we have and, and is, what we have is different from what the law department just produced. Then I guess I guess that's what I'm a little unclear about. There are more changes that were made by law now. So the law department has a version with um, edits and comments attached that they just shared, and before they finalized it, they wanted to have folks weigh in one more time. So based upon the conversation that's happening right now, if there's anything else that they need to change, they will do that before the study session next week. Okay, I think in order to avoid this exact same thing in the general, we, let's have this committee get our answer. Like, let's take the time to review what law department just sent recently, today. And uh, I'll, you, I'll reach out to the committee members to have any I'll document these questions and then make sure we're all on a page and then hopefully it can be smoother sailing in front of the larger group. But I would rather, I guess, hold it and have us do this again next time and have it hopefully go smoother with the bigger group. If that, does that seem like a reasonable approach for everybody? Yep. Okay. So we're going to yeah. move the three items and we're going to hold within committee, the, um, the travel legislation. It appears that uh, Caitlin Wright may be on if, if we want to ask a question about the land bank uh, intent. I think she's logging on, so we'll let her have a second to get here. And can I just jump in real quick to um, um, counsel? Yes, because I'm, I'm listening to the recommendation from, from law about not doing the um, expenses for meals. That's basically standard practice for any travel in any company. I think it's $15 a day because we're making a predetermination that people can take care of that. Just my opinion. Adrian, wouldn't people still get meal reimbursement? It just how does it how would it work? I didn't understand it, but it goes away completely. Yeah, so so I I think I would disagree with the law department's recommendation that they made on this to exclude meals from the prepayment. If somebody needs the prepayment and we already know how much meals they're going to get, we did set a maximum of what that prepayment should be. So I don't see the harm of giving them the meal allotment if allotment if they need it ahead of time. Thank you. Councilor Rudd. Yes. If um if willing, I, I, I 
I just received the document from the law department to 1150. And so I haven't had a chance to really read it. Um, so if I can, as I have done so far with this, is to uh, provide you and the additional counselors and Adria and the law department, my response to that before you- Yes, I'll, and I will include you with the committee members of this group. You, I consider you to be part of this process at this point, so. Uh, okay, thank you. Ab absolutely. Okay, Caitlin, do you wanna um, talk about the lot? Yes, we were approached, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Kate. Okay. Uh, we were approached by um, Habitat for Humanity recently. They wanted to donate two lots to us, and this is one of them at 307 Holland. Um, to be honest, I am i can't recall if they acquired these lots from the city or from home headquarters, but at one time they had an intention to build there, and they never did. And this lot is... I believe only 33 feet wide, and so I don't think they're going to have an opportunity to build on it in the future unless they could combine it with a neighboring parcel. Um, and the reason why we were willing to entertain the idea of accepting the donation is that on either side there are seizable lots. And so our thinking is that eventually we'll take those three in a row and turn them into either one or two new construction sites. What's the status of the other two lots that are on, it, on the neighboring sides? All I know is that they are seizable. I'm not certain the city has begun the foreclosures on those yet or not. So in other words, we, we would build on that, Caitlin, right? Eventually, once we're able to get all three in a row and the you know, reconfiguration of the parcels. How many sites do you currently have that are buildable as is what you've already taken? One second, I'll look that up. for the delay. Um, looks like we have <clears throat> 177 that are currently uh, building sites that are not lined up for a specific project that aren't already um, attached to a specific project. But, you know, I, I would say we'd have to go through this and pull some out because I'm sure some of them are on steep slopes and things like that. Um, it looks like a very buildable site. I will say that online, but yeah, this one is that. nice and level, and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it also looks like it needs a sidewalk replaced. I don't know what it's worth. Other counselors have a um, comment questions. No side yards, right? No, there wouldn't be anybody to sell this to as a side yard because both neighboring sites are vacant lots. You never know. Excellent. So yeah. um, to circle back around, Councillor Bay, are you okay moving this forward? Yes. Councillor Hogan, do you have any yes. questions? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yep, I'm all set now. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor, we'll can forward. I ask a question to Frank Kaliva? Frank, uh, just back on the travel policy. Procedurally, I, I noticed this is the budget director and the mayor given uh, uh, permission to go, which I'm all, you know, all in favor of everything over a thousand dollars. But when a city employee's at a at a meeting or something outside the city, I mean it doesn't have to be codified, but procedurally the mayor's aware of it, correct? Um if it, 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 it right now, uh, counselor? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I mean that's a procedure that if I'm outside the city, it, no matter what it costs, if it's just a day long trip to Rochester. Uh, and city business, the mayor's aware, correct? Right now, yes. Under the new policy, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Huh? Under the okay. new policy, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Well, I'm saying it doesn't have to be codified, but we have to put it in, In, I mean, we'd have to have it in uh, as part of uh, this travel policy. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a procedural thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the travel, Yeah, under the current travel policy, papers, travel papers have to be submitted even for 
local travel or day travel. And that was part of the reason to, as I understood it, to update the policy because that was pretty cumbersome. So that's, I, I guess we're gonna to have to discuss this at a later yeah. date, because we, I would we, think as a procedure, somebody who's going to a, a meeting outside the city would, the mayor, mayor would be aware of that. But if you're saying it doesn't necessarily have, it's not necessarily the case under the new not, policy. Not under the, yeah, it would be a, it would be a, under a thousand dollars, it would be, or at no cost, it would be a department head that would know. I learned something every day. Frank, can you just comment on the, the RAN? We authorized the RAN like a month ago. And yes. in the end, we got 80% of our aid, so we didn't end up reissuing it. Is yeah. that? And Commissioner uh, O'Connor, newly minted Commissioner of Finance, is on and can give you the cash flow details. But the short story is we were able to meet our obligation to um, uh, on the expiring uh, ran using the eighty percent, and right now uh, have not needed to to execute that borrowing facility. And so you're going to let us you're going to let us know about the commissioner of finance appointment and that at the same time. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I said you're going to let us know about the, our new commissioner of finance uh, and about not using the ran at the same time, or correct. Uh, sure. I mean, I, I, I texted or I had a long conversation with our finance director, yes, or our head of our finance committee. He was, was unaware that we didn't use the RAN until later in the afternoon. Yeah, we, so far we haven't used it. So does oh. it expire? You have the ability to use it for how long? I, I should know, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know that off the top of my head either, counselor. We can find that out. I just wasn't sure if it, I think Councillor Hogan and I weren't sure if it expired at the end of the fiscal year or not. Certainly the end of the fiscal year, but maybe prior to that, uh, I don't know if. Uh, no, with the fiscal year, I mean, it just ended, right? Like June 30th was the end, today's July 1. So that's the part we were, were wondering about. When it was, what the term was for the authorization. And I, yeah. and I would have to go back and look at the way the, the, uh, the legislation was written. Frank and Brad, maybe for, uh, for the future, when you prevail upon the council to go to these blanks and say that we need this RAN or we might go broke, when you don't tell us that you need the RAN, I would like, like to be notified of that as part of the finance committee. Fair enough. Yeah, and I'm, I, I owe uh, each of you an email with the updated um, financial projections and cash flow projections. I've got that uh, ready to go out. And so uh, I apologize for the delay in that, but you should see that today. Cut. Council Rudd? Yes, sir. I just want to let everybody know, I assume you saw I, I distributed our cash and investments audit um to all of you a couple days ago so just want to make sure you all got that yes i'm sure we'll be able to have a committee meeting to go over it soon good okay all right thank you everybody um see you all later in the afternoon appreciate it thank Bye -bye. you thank you Council Rudd, just to be clear, the um, so it's just a three, and then the uh, the travel policy is held for the agenda. I guess he's gone. I'll call him. Thanks. I don't know, James. I think they moved it. Oh. Or maybe it. not. I don't know. Oh, he's it's calling me. That's okay. All right. Bye bye. For the. For the travel policy, he used the phrase hold 